All right, so here we are, you guys. This is my foundation. I am a self-builder. I'm hiring out most of the work, but I'm doing a lot of the work myself too. I'm also making all of the big decisions. I just want to talk about why I came to this decision. This is not quite a basement, but it's a short basement. It's not quite a crawl space, but it's a tall crawl space. And it's not quite a Michigan basement, but it's somewhere in between. Um, a Michigan basement, I just learned, is a basement that's about five to seven feet. This is about four feet, so I don't know where this falls. It's just a tall crawl space, I guess. So what first attracted me to this type of foundation was uh, Matt Rissinger and uh, Essential Craftsman on YouTube. Essential Craftsman, he's doing a whole uh, spec house build series on YouTube, and I was following his channel. He's doing a very similar um, foundation except he's going with uh, CMUs or concrete masonry units, the uh, cinder blocks for his wall. I'm going with a poured concrete wall, ICFs, and I'll get to that in a minute, why, why I chose ICFs and uh, changed my mind from a uh, standard formed eight inch, four foot wall. From the ground up, first we started by digging a four foot uh, hole basically in the ground and we laid our footers right on the bottom of that. The footers are two feet wide, 10 inch deep in uh, some areas and 12 inches in other areas because I have the, uh, the bottom of the excavation actually slanted to one corner of the space in order to draw water in one direction if it does hit the bottom there. Inside of the footers, I have number five rebar. The structural engineer called for number four, but after just a little research, I heard that number five is typically used in footers. So I just went with number five. It was a uh, I think a thousand dollar difference. Today we are going to pour the concrete footers and when that's fully cured we're going to move into the crawl space area. I'm going to fill that with dirt. I'm going to compact it, send my uh, drain tile around each section inside of the crawl space uh, which is perforated schedule 40 PVC which I drilled myself to save quite a bit of money and because I wanted my holes in certain uh, areas on the pipe. I didn't want them directly on the bottom and I didn't want them surrounding the entire pipe. I just wanted two rows offset by 90 degrees. So the idea is this bottom pipe will sit about two inches up like that. I'm gonna have two inches of rock per code below this French drain. And also it's gonna be wrapped in a filter fabric and also be filled with more rock. And this top four inch pipe will serve two purposes. One, it will route to a drain, a floor drain inside my interior crawl space. And then it will also branch off and go around the perimeter of my interior space. This four inch pipe is my fourth line of defense against the water. And both of these pipes drain all the way to daylight, which isn't very common because you generally have to go pretty far to do that. I have plenty of uh, land to do that. It, it exits about, uh, I think 200, 250 feet behind my property. Most people use a sump pump. They'll drain it to a sump pump and the, the pump in the ground or the whole, the bin that collects the water in the ground will have a pump inside of it that pumps the water up and away from the house. That's the more common approach. But this is a much more foolproof system in my opinion because I have, there's no maintenance. There's no pumps to worry about going out and failing on me. And it's a giant pipe. It's very unlikely to get clogged. And I'll have a clean out. I'll have a clean out drain for this bottom pipe. So yeah, that's the drain system. So after the drain tile is placed, I'm gonna bring in rock to fill in the trenches where the tile is. And then on top of that, we're gonna put a two inch slab. I forget what they call that, but it's just a small two inch slab just to have a comfortable crawl space and to keep out dirt, uh, water, and uh, gases like uh, radon if that's an issue around here. Once that's all finished, we're gonna move to the walls. The walls I was originally going to form. I wanted to bring in metal forms, but all the companies I call that rent out these forms are about $3,000 and about three weeks out. So I wanted to hurry up and get this done. So I ordered a bunch of plywood and a bunch of two by four by 16s that the concrete guys told me I needed to get for them to form the walls. And then after sitting on that for a while and just uh, doing a little cost engineering, it really made no sense wasting all this wood uh, at where the current cost of wood is at. These were about $55 a piece. It was $8,000 for all the plywood, all the two by fours and all of my drainage uh, PVC. So I decided to go with ICFs, which 
come in actually much cheaper. I'm spending $2,900 total for all of the ICFs, all delivered from Nebraska, um, ordered through a local ICF supplier named ICF Concepts here in Royce City, Texas. This is a corner piece of ICF. This is going to be placed on top of my footer once the footers are uh, completely cured and ready to form the wall. ICF stands for Insulated Concrete Form and these things are amazing. I mean, it kind of it's kind of a package of uh, three jobs. You get the formwork done, you get the insulation done, and you get the concrete done. And you get uh, easy access or easy uh, easy ties for rebar. The rebar just sets inside of these plastic separators that have these uh, clips or whatever that the rebar clips into. So you don't have to like suspend, figure out how to suspend the rebar in the wall. It just sits right on top of these, the horizontal rebar. And the vertical rebar is already laid before we even put this on. This will just slide right over the rebar like so. Okay. Oh, it looks like my guys are pulling up right now. That's nice. All right, so I guess I'll pause here and finish as these guys get started on their job.